This is a preview of our video from our online Ortho Essentials 101 course. We hope that you like it. And if you do like it, click the link in our description to find out some more information. Okay. All right, guys, we got another good topic here for you. So this topic, we're, we're going to go over reading lumbar MRIs, and pretty much we're going to go over the basic of reading these scans, okay, because they're pretty common, and I want you guys to have a, a good idea on what you're looking at once we're once once you see this in a clinical setting. So the first thing that I think we should start at is, well, there's two types of images that you can get with MRI scans. So there's a T1 and a T2. So on T1 scans, fat is hypertense or bright and fluid is hypotense or dark. Okay. And for T2, always remember T2, H2O fluid is hyper intense or bright. So fluid and fat is, is bright on T2 when on T1, only fat is bright. All right. So I got both of these up here and I want you to see these because this is showing you the difference. Okay. So out here, this is all kind of the subcutaneous tissues, and this is where fat is. You can see that that is bright on both sides. Well, we're going to look in the actual spinal canal, all right? And here you can see cerebral spinal fluid, all this light-colored fluid here. That is CSF versus if we go over here, it's dark. And it's bright on the back because that is what? Epidural fat. All right, so that's epidural fat back here, fluid in the front, and it's dark. So this is a T1, that's a T2. Usually for uh, spine, most times you're going to be focusing on T2 scans, okay? So that's tend to be what we evaluate these, these scans with, unless there's something a little bit more specific that we're looking at. So the two different types of images that we tend to have are sagittal, and axial images that we're we're looking at on these MRI scans. So the one here on the left, that is a sagittal. It's pretty much like cut, looking at the spine from the side. You cut slices down and looking at the spine on the side, that's your sagittal. And kind of looking at the spine from the top down, this is more of axial, okay? So this is cuts through the actual spine. This is kind of cutting it like a loaf of bread and you're looking at it from the side. It's looking at it from the top down. All right. So that's just some of the basics here. I think I'm going to start on the sagittal, okay? And this line here that you see, it, is, it correlates with the two images. So it kind of lets you know where we are on the other, other view, okay? So that can help us. But I'm going to start here. All right. So this is S1, L5, L4, L3, L2. L1, all right? So we're in the lumbar spine. Down here in between these vertebrae, you can see the disc, which we're pretty much named for the vertebral levels that they're sandwiched between. So this would be L1, 2, vertebral disc, L2, 3, L3, 4, L4, 5, L5, S1. So if you notice, this here is a little bit brighter. You can see a little bit lighter of a, a color throughout this disc, all right, which is actually normal. But if we keep going down, you can start seeing it gets darker and darker. Well, we call that desiccation, okay? So like I told you, on T2 scans, H2O or fluid is bright, all right? So this is showing that the disc is well hydrated, which is what it normally should be as you age, degeneration, it, it becomes a little bit more dry and brittle and that's why it's starting to get a little bit more darker here. This was like a middle-aged male. But yes, as you age, and sometimes just with the generation, these discs start to get a little bit darker. So that's, some, that's something that we see right off here. It's just there's a little bit of what we call desiccation going on with these discs space here. And let's go here. You can see here this dark gray. Up above, this is the spinal cord, okay? And then it tapers off and give you your cauda equina or your nerve roots, okay? So the spinal cord itself tapers off usually around L1, L2, 
All right, let's see, five, four, three, two, one. So usually somewhere in this area, you can't really tell exactly where on this scan, but it usually tapers off right around L1, L2. That's what we call the conus. And then it gives off like a horse tail or the cauda equina, which are the nerve roots. So that's a, one of the first things to recognize. So when you're, if you're talking to someone and you're around L4, L5, and you see the dural sac, you can't really say that's the spinal cord because it's not. It's the, you can say cauda equina, you can say it's the nerve roots, but you can't really call it a spinal cord, okay? So that's just a, a little tip to make you sound like you know what's going on. All right, back to this dark gray. So this is nerve roots, spinal cord, and it looks pretty good here, okay? So what we want to see, we want to see that these nerves are just dangling in this fluid here in the CSF, all right? So as I kind of come up, I can see there is nothing pressure directly on to these nerve roots here, okay? So even though there may be some small bulges, nothing, and it is pressing onto the thecal sac, all right, the thecal sac, but it's not putting pressure onto the nerves as you look through the central canal, all right? So that's a good thing. On the front is there is no significant stenosing lesions that you can see here on the front, okay? Uh, posteriorly, let's look, take a look at that. So posteriorly, you can see these are the spinous processes here. Spinous process, spinous process, spinous process. In between are is muscle and ligaments. All right, that comes into play sometimes within traumatic settings. You can see, sometimes see disruption in this area, in the inner spinous ligaments. So that's where you would look. You can still see the posterior longitudinal ligament here. It's this dark black line in the front on, on the vertebral bodies. Okay, so you can see that. You see this bulge here. All right. So I'm gonna move over to the axial, okay? Starting at one, as we can on one, stops there. All right, again, so you're, you're looking at all these nerve roots here, okay? All these little dots, that's exactly what you wanna see, these dots, all right? And you can see there, again, there's nothing pressing onto these nerve roots and you're able to see these nerve roots able are able to track out through the foramen without any major stenosis lesions. That's kind of that's exactly what you want to see. Try to get a better view of this. Let's see. Let's go to here. Yeah. Okay. So just looking at some of the anatomy again: nerve roots, fecal sac, CSF. These are your facet joints. Okay, which is pretty much the articulating portion of the posterior spine. All right. This will be your inferior and superior facet joints. Okay. Which makes up part of the borders of the foramen, which will be out here. This area here is called the lateral recess. Central canal. Lateral recess. Foramen. And as we go out, that's kind of considered far lateral. You can see this muscle, big muscle here. Okay. That's your psoas muscle. It comes into play. We go through that a lot for our lateral procedures. You have two of them. All right. And something else that's big for me to mention. All right. So due to the way it's positioned, even though this is the right side of the screen, this correlates to the left side of the body. The left side of the screen correlates to the right side of the body. So just always remember that it's flipped when you're seeing it, okay? So we're going to keep going here. Oh, look at that. All right. So comparing again, here's our nerve roots. You got your facets, spinous process. You got your big erector spinae muscles back here. You can tell this is like a younger guy because he doesn't have a lot of fat interspersed through his muscles. If you started looking at some of these MRIs on these older patients, do note sometimes that they have a lot of what we call atrophy, muscle atrophy in their lumbar paraspinal musculature, okay? Just something to, to note. All right, so this is a good one here. So centrally, you can see maybe he has a little bit of a bulge there, but nothing significant stenosis or pressure onto the nerve roots when you look here. 
But as we go through the axial, you can see that, okay, nerve roots here, exiting nerve on the right side looks free. Left side, exiting nerve root, it gets tight right in here. It looks like there's a disc bulge right there putting pressure onto this exiting nerve root. So this is how it should look, something like this, okay? It exits out through the foramen and to the rest of the body where it can innervate its dermatome. Now, you can see exiting nerve comes out here, boom. There's this disc right there that's putting pressure onto this nerve root on the way out. So this may cause symptoms for this patient. And again, I'm calling this the exiting nerve root. So we're going to call this level five, four, three. So we're going to say this level three, four. And if this this the exiting nerve, I would expect for this to cause symptoms in the uh, left-sided L3 nerve distribution. So that needs to make sense to you, okay? Far lateral, far lateral and extra foraminal and foraminal disc herniations tend to injure the exiting nerve root. If it was more in the lateral recess or central canal, that causes symptoms in the traversing nerve root. So that's not really the topic of this discussion, but I do want that to make sense to you all. Let's take a better look over there. So we're going to move this sagittal over a little bit more just to see. You can see, okay, so you can still see that disc bulge right there, okay? So this is called your foramen, all right? So this is looking at the foramen. And again, this will be at the L3 nerve root here. And usually, let's see if he has any really good ones that I can show you. Usually, these nerves are surrounded by fat throughout this foramen. And that's kind of let you know that they're happy, okay? It's usually a, a nice circle of fat around these nerves when you go off to the side and look through the foramen, okay? That's what you want to see. It lets you know, once again, that it's just kind of floating around. There's nothing put any significant pressure onto that nerve root. All right, over here. Again, I still see fat around it, so he may not even be symptomatic, all right? That's another big thing. If you get MRIs on most people, you'll start seeing pathology, but it does not always correlate to clinical symptoms. You gotta piece all that together, but I did want you to see how these foramen look if you keep going over on the sagittal view, you can actually see the foramen. And what you want to see is the nerve surrounded by bright fat. Okay. And that lets you know that nerve is free and floating. So this is another good one here. Again, so as so as vertebral body here, thecal sac, nerve root exiting. But I'm gonna go down a little bit further. And you can see yet again, he has another disc. Yeah, he got a big disc bulge. That's kind of pyramidal and far lateral disc bulge here that is causing some stenosis on that nerve root, okay? Again, you have to see this patient and see if he's having any clinical symptoms because he may not be looking at the actual foramen on the sagittal. Still has some fat around that nerve. Just looking out here, he could possibly be symptomatic from that, so... That's the main thing that I want you guys to be able to recognize, okay? When you're going through these, one, pay attention to your musculature. A lot of people don't look at that. Look for all that atrophy that you can sometimes see in the rectus spinae muscle, muscles or the paraspinal musculature. We're going to know what the bones are, spinous process, our facet joints. Sometimes these can be overgrown as well and cause some stenosis symptoms. We know this is our psoas. Oh, yeah. Let's go back here. And we got our aorta and inferior vena cava anteriorly. You can watch those split. Aorta usually splits around L4-5. And the vena cava tends to split around the L5 vertebral body. All right. You can't, this, this is not the best quality image, but they... Pay attention to your vasculature. It does matter sometimes depending on what kind of approaches you're doing, especially if you're trying to go lateral or anterior. You got to know where these vessels are. All right. But now we know how these nerve roots should look. We should be able to see dots. All right. We should be able to see the exiting nerve root coming out the foramen. Just by chance, we even see some 
this herniation. So that's a little bit far foraminal and maybe far lateral here. Sometimes you can have a lot of stenosis here centrally, and instead of seeing these dots, this looks much smaller, and all you can't really see dots anymore. It just becomes like a black, a small black area. That's one way that you can know, like, all right, things are stenotic here. But that's kind of the go. I usually start with my sagittal. I like to get a good central cut because sometimes you can see a lot of stenosis right here. You can get an idea if there's any deformity going on with the bone. Does he have a spondylolisthesis? This patient does not when he's laying supine at least. And so, yeah, this is kind of the basis, okay? We, we got an idea. I like to start off looking at my sagittal, get a good central canal view, making sure that nothing's obviously pressing on to my nerve roots here. There's no huge spondylolisthesis going on with the vertebral bodies. And this patient does not have one, at least when he lies supine. Uh, you also get a look at the vertebral disc. Sometimes you can see a lot of degenerative disc disease, which can also affect the end plates of the vertebral bodies. So you can kind of get a quick look at that all just from the, the sagittal. Then I inspect things a little bit more thoroughly going through each level with my axial C, uh, MRI. And I'm looking for centrally making sure that my nerve i can see all these dots i can see my exiting nerve root going without any stenotic lesions throughout this okay and i also take a look at this muscle like like we mentioned before all right so yeah and now you even know how these discs look okay so this is the the ring there's the disc you can see this all this is disc here that's herniated here right through there all right but that's what we're looking for on the mri okay so this is it's fairly normal besides like i say he has these kind of far lateral disc herniations at what we're calling l34 and l45 down here l51 looks pretty good you can see the nerve roots getting out without any significant stenotic lesion so but this is the basics, guys. Hope this helps.